Thank you so much, everybody, for taking time with us today. Um, we're going to have a little fun. Typically at OmniTalk, we're talking about the hard-hitting retail news and events um, and the future of retail. But today is a little bit different. Today, we are inspired by a couple of things. First, a trend we've been following uh, in Asia, especially with, um, with Alibaba and the live stream shopping. So we're going to do a little live stream shopping test of our own here today. Um, and second, the inspiration that has come from being um, at home, working and jumping from Zoom to Zoom call. And, you know, if this was normal life, if we were going into these, these meetings in an actual conference room or an actual event, we would be putting time and effort into how we're showing up for those meetings. And honestly, right now, for a lot of us, some of these meetings are more detrimental to our businesses and to the future of our businesses than ever before. So we wanted to bring you uh, someone who could help us with what those things are that we should be doing, the quick fixes we can make and put in place in order to get ready for those calls that we'll be having virtually for the rest of the summer for sure, if not longer. So with that, I would like to introduce Sal Rodriguez, who is my co-host for today. So Sal, excited. Yes, yes. Sal has been in the world of cosmetics for two whole decades, although you'd never be able to tell from the beautiful glowing skin. He has a passion for all things beauty and skincare, which help him stay on the forefront of the latest and greatest product launches, as well as current trends, uh, keeping his keen eye on beauty that is iconic and timeless. Sal has a vast repertoire of experience in the world of retail, video, fashion, print, celebrity, bridal, the list goes on. Sal's mission is to eliminate makeup intimidation, which I love. Uh, he wants his clients to use makeup as a tool of inspiration and to instill confidence and to encourage all women, men, and others to look and feel their very best. Because when you are inspired and confident, it is easier than to inspire others. And never has there been a time where we need more inspiration than right now. So Sal, thanks for being here today. Oh my God, I am so happy and I'm so excited. This is so much fun. <laughs> yes, I can't wait to hear this story. You, you look like you're in the process already. So um, I'm, I'm pretty pumped about this event. <laughs> Thank so you. I Go wanted ahead. to jo join you guys um, in a process such as, right, we all know how to put on concealer. All of us know how to put on your foundation and your basics. So you would normally do a primer, you foundation, conceal, and then you want to set it. I always say, if you take the time to put it on, take an extra minute and set it. Why am I a little focused under the eyes? Well, in this day and age, especially things going virtual and video, this is our focal point right? So yes. the, the more you let a little powder rest there, the brighter it looks. Um, if you're using proper hydration to begin with, there's never no fear of uh, that area looking a little bit drier or textured. That is perfect. And I really want to get to it. Before we dive in, I have a couple of housekeeping things for those of you paying attention um, via live stream uh, and those of you joining us uh, in the Zoom webinar uh, itself. So as promised, we are going to try live shopping. So as we go through Sal's fabulous tips and tricks, including highlighting and hydrating those areas, we'll be doing a little splurge versus steal shopping. So I'll be posting all the links to all the products that you're using, Sal, in the demo today. And all those products are available through Cosbar. So thank you to Cosbar for uh, their participation today as well. And then uh, in conjunction, I'll also be posting links to some of uh, the steel products, we're calling them from Target Beauty. So if you're on a little bit of a constrained budget these days, um, you're definitely able to go take a look at those as well. Now, one important thing of note, uh, Cosbar is giving away special gifts to anybody that's participating in this live event tonight. You, yes, you, so in order to get your special gift and to get Cosbar points, if you are a Cosbar member, um, you will want to take a look at this list, jot down notes as we're going through, look at the chat, use the links to find information on the product. But key thing here is you want to email your list to Edina, that's E-D-I-N-A 
at cosbar.com and Cosbar will ship a very special gift to you. You'll earn triple points and you also put need to put Sal2020 into the, the uh, email somewhere. It can be in the subject line, anywhere. I love Sal, it doesn't matter what you put in there, but uh, <laughs> in order to qualify for all of those fantastic giveaways, uh, you'll just have to note that in and they will ship the product directly to you. So um, we'll also be emailing you a list after this event is over with the list of all of those products that I'm putting in the chat. So if you are kicking back, you got your glass of rosé and you can't do all of these things at once, don't worry, you will get an email with all of those products and the email and all the information that you need after. And finally, make sure to post your comments and questions in the chat throughout. So there's a chat box for those of you participating in Zoom where I'm posting the products. Feel free to go ahead and put your questions in there for Sal. We'll take some time at the end too to have a little Q&A. Or if you're contacting or participating with us on LinkedIn Live, feel free to type those uh, in the comments section there too. So, Sal. Yes. I think we should get started, but where, where to start? I, there's so many questions that I have for you. Um, my first question, and you can move this later if you need to, but my first question is, if anybody is like me, they are in a position where they've got an impromptu phone call that says, listen, I've got 10 minutes to get ready. Can you be on a call, on a Zoom video call in 10 minutes? What do I do? Ooh, that's easy, actually. What I would <laughs> Good. do is, Good. it's easy for you. <laughs> I'm all that's why you're here. I'm all about efficiency. I think that there's been no better time for uh, us to pull out, you know, our bronzers. Okay. A good highlighter and a good brow. You know, okay. that is the stuff that tends to wash you out at any photo, photo, much less a video. So in that case, those are, I would say those are, your star products. You want a, a strong defined brow so that it doesn't wash your face off entirely. And then you also want a little bit of glow, a little bit of radiance. Okay. So I'll let you, I'll let you get into the full demo. So bronzer, highlighter, and brow, key things. If you got, if you're going to have an emergency drawer next to you of things to pull out and slap on real quick to get ready for that, uh, that Zoom meeting in 10 minutes, <laughs> Bronzer, highlighter, brow, we will definitely put those into our chat, uh, chat box next to us for products going through. But what about if you have a little bit more time? So take us through how you would prep for a Zoom call in this day and age when, when you're really going to put some effort into it and you want to go through the whole process. Start us with, with step one. You know, here's what I, I think it's a, a great time to do this call, not only because things are somewhat changing pandemic wise hopefully we're starting to see a light at the end of the tunnel but also it's a seasonal change for a lot of us we tend to probably now migrate to different moisturizers lighter textures lighter weight uh, and even makeup I mean this is the season for tinted moisturizer right we leave our heavy um, foundations for fall and winter behind um, and you really do transition and if you don't I think you'll find it so helpful skin texture and tone wise when you do transition to something lighter and I wanted to cover something that is amazing and it is the breaking the internet, you guys. This is the Augustinus Botter Facial Moisturizer. The folks are calling it the Miracle Cream. The texture's insane. It's super lightweight. Think of like back in the day when we were first hearing the accolades of Creme de la Mer and everyone was just, you know, jumping up and down, wanting and dying to try it. Um, it's, it's called the Miracle Cream for a reason. The texture is beautiful. Um, he's a medical professor. Massive amount of patents. It's fabulous. This is what I'm currently moisturizing with. And I told Anne um, in a different call, I was like, it's divine. I've been on it for 30 days and I can't, for four weeks, the optimum where you should see, start seeing results is four weeks. And I'm obsessed. You know, I'm closer to 40 now than I am to 30. <laughs> Um, and I gotta say, it's made a big deal. Now, um, it is a dense price point. So my other go-to is the Bobbi Brown face cream that also preps your skin for foundation. You guys, it does prep your skin for foundation. It's $60. It's not an insane price point. This might be a, closer to 300 
Uh, so you, you weigh out your options, but I do say that priming is essential, pardon, to keeping your makeup looking fresh, keeping your skin looking natural. No one wants to look overly made up as there's a lot of stigma that comes with that anyway, right? And if you do look and feel comfortable, you feel confident. Right. So I would moisturize. Something else that I don't know if you are into, Anne, is masking. How do you feel about masks? Uh, well, I try to do them, probably not as often as I should, but um, I did try the one that you're about to talk about. And I have to say, it doesn't have like the, it's not putting on the full, like thick, dense, your face is crackling kind of mask. It's really hydrating and moisturizing. So I loved, loved that about this one. I, I am, uh, sorry, I'm distracted by the chat. I'm into it. Um, I love the Sicily face mask. It's a black, black rose face mask. This is for radiance, anti-aging, smoothing, and hydration. Um, Sicily is legendary when it comes to its botanical science and that kind of fun stuff. So if you're a Sicily fan, you probably already have this. And if you don't have it, you should. It's phenomenal. Tata Harper is... Uh, the new American hero for skincare. She is based out of Vermont. She brings this um, farm to table concept that we once were thrilled with in the restaurant world. Now to skincare. Uh, it's all made in Vermont. There's a cute little fun fact that behind it, on the bottom of every bottle, there is a number and it shows you like how it was made, how it was created, who did it. It's kind of cool. But this would be a, a lot more affordable than Sicily. Doing a little bit more when it comes to exfoliating and renewing, um, and also a little bit more for your normal to drier complexions. So these are my favorite masks. Um, what, how do you feel about an essence? Have you heard of an essence? Who doesn't love an essence? Let's bring them all. <laughs> all of the essences, just let them flow. So, yes. An essence is what's breaking the internet, you guys. This is the Amore Pacific, and I added this last minute because I think all, us as Americans are so used to toners. So we love a toner, right? Like think of like our childhood clinic visits with the toner and the soap. This is fabulous. This is your toner, your hydrator. Think of a damp sponge that's gonna pick up a spill a lot faster than a dry one. This is going to allow for your, anything that you're putting on your face, skincare and treatment wise to sink in and to actually sit in a lot easier. I'm obsessed with these. And like I said, we're seeing them, SK2 is legendary for bringing like that Japanese ritual to us when it comes to an essence. And now everyone else has a more Pacific, for example, is doing it great with a lot of green tea. So very re-energizing to the skin. So we covered moisturizers, masks, let's get to makeup. I love it. I love it. So we have two quick questions before we move on to makeup for the next one. One, can you recommend a good uh, sun care product that maybe in one of those bases that we're putting on for, I know some of them have, I think, some SPF in there, but if you have any yeah. suggestions there. You're, you're going right where I'm going. Oh, perfect. I think sunscreen is incredible and you have to understand the science behind sunscreen, right? Sunscreen should be towards the end of your makeup rich, r routine for it to be effective. Um, primers, right? It's a crime not to prime. So putting on a primer before you put on your tinted moisture or tinted moisturizer or foundation is really what uh, allows for your makeup to look like second skin. These come in a variety of formulas uh, and they do separate things. If you are someone that loves sunscreen and you like to be outside, she does make the pr uh, protective. Can you see that? Yes. Uh, SPF 30. Um, that's the most recommended SPF anyway, and you can reapply by simply dabbing and pressing on top of what you've already done. Or a lot of women don't know, but if, even if you're not gonna put makeup on, grab your primer. It has a lot of uh, skincare qualities to it also, and your sunscreen all in one. So just throw I, that on. One quick question, Sal. For some of the men who don't traditionally wear makeup, what is okay as far as, or what would you say is like a good entry point for them for, so for sure the, the moisturizers and the masks, absolutely. Yeah. And then primer also I would, a possibility. I, would say so I think if you're someone that tends to be pretty red or someone yeah. that has a lot of unevenness, primers are a huge gain and benefit to putting them on. I uh, 
quick little side note, I work with uh, the NFL for uh, NFL films and that kind of stuff. So I get to put makeup on a lot of men. Most of them uh, are, you know, freaking out and shrieking. But I got to say by the end of it, because, you know, they assume makeup, they'll look like how you and I would probably. Right. Uh, but it's this, you know, to even out your skin tone, and keep things looking pretty smooth and healthy. And there's a lot of options. There's tinted sunscreens now for men that pack a little tint. Um, I also love that the fear and stigma of tinted moisturizers have now, has now kind of dissipated and a lot more men are using them. Yes. Um, and those are great. And they also pack a little sunscreen, most of them. So it's pretty multi-benefit. Love it. Love it. Absolutely. Okay. Let's go on to primers. I'll let you continue. So back to the primer. And like I said, it's a crime not to prime guys. You got to do it. It takes a few extra seconds. And like I said, if, even if you're not going to put makeup on, grab your primer, put it on and go about your day. Uh, there's a, I have on a, an illuminating line. I love looking radiant. I like looking glowy. I hate to look dry. So this is illuminating. If you're someone that's shiny, that has an issue with pores, she does have a blurring one. Uh, there's options galore. And this is when you could type up that little email, send me that, and then we can answer whatever questions you may have in, in regards to what's your, what's your part and ideal primer. I'm going to move to foundations. And I got to talk to you guys about Gucci Westman, probably an obscure human to most of us, right? Yes, um, please explain. A... <laughs> Gucci Westman, Westman is a legendary makeup artist that's been in the scene for probably three decades, three plus decades, four maybe, uh, along the li likes of a Bobby Brown, a Francois Nars. She's always been at the forefront of like fashion and, and the world of Vogue and that kind of fun stuff. But she's also very minimal and she loves natural. So her packaging is super chic. This is her foundation and it's the foundation I have on today. And it's a stick foundation, you guys. Who doesn't like like doing a couple warrior stripes, rubbing it in, going back to what you said, you have 10 minutes for a Zoom meeting, grab your foundation, post primer, rub it in, focus it in certain areas where you feel like you're not getting enough coverage. You don't need a sponge, you don't need a brush. Your paw is all you need. And you also truly don't even need to set this. Uh, she suggests that you just put it on, let it set on its own. And it does set to almost a dry powder feel. If you're gonna do meetings at home, I wouldn't set it. But if you're gonna go out and about and you expect your makeup to, look, to stay on a little longer, then a little setting powder would be ideal. This is the um, Vital Skin Foundation Stick. I love them. The shades are very adjusting and they're easy to manage. So you don't have to struggle with, am I going to have a line, et cetera. This is 68 or $70, I believe. Uh, Laura Mercier's Flawless Lumiere Foundation is about, you know, half of that maybe retail wise. And it also does its job. This is radiance infusing, very skin-like also. And I love it because similar to this, um, it does glide on easy. It blends effortlessly. I would suggest that you probably have to set this versus the stick. But, you know, a foundation is great and your best friend or your enemy. If you don't get the right formula or you are not getting, or if you're, even if you're getting too much coverage, there is such a thing as too much coverage and you're not unable or unaware of how to blend it. So I think figuring out what you prefer coverage wise and texture is vital. Val, how would we determine that? So if you are getting too much coverage or your foundation, um, how, do you, how do you set it so that it's right? Especially when you're gonna be on a, a call or on a webcam, like most of us are. I think understanding what your concerns are. I think every, all of us have separate concerns. Uh, for me is I wanna look even. I want my skin okay. to all look one tone. Some people say I want my skin to look smooth. Right? I have texture, I have pores. If you're prone to blemishes, you probably would want something more matte versus okay. radiant because you don't want your skin to, you don't want the texture to shine through. Some people are very dry and you fear dullness. That's when you would want illumination, radiance, and glow. You have to understand um, what it is that you want first. And I think it's pretty easy. All of us stare at our face in the mirror, whether we wear makeup or not enough to know like, oh my God, my pores, or I look so dry. And it's that simple. 
so you don't have to stress too much about it. So to answer um, Cindy's question too in the comments, so if you want to you want to go for that uh, fresh dewy look, and if you have pretty dry skin, what would be the things that you would suggest, or is there a product that you would suggest for that? For sure, product? I think it starts with your moisturizer for Cindy in particular, especially if you're dry. So go with something heavy and enriched so that your skin isn't longing for more moisture from any product. You know, if you don't do a good moisturizer and you put on a very hydrating foundation your skin is going to sop up that moisture and then you're just gonna end up looking like you have a little bit of a dry foundation on. But looking for words like uh, radiance, illuminating, that's what you would want, as well as start with the primer, yeah? Infuse a little radiance in your skin with the primer, do your foundation, and nothing like a good glowing bronzer. Love it, awesome. So All right. primer, foundation, right, formulas, for some people that are new also and are not, let's say, committed to coverage because they don't want to stress about blending or it takes too much time, that's where I would say a tinted moisturizer is ideal. This is the Tom Ford Glow Tinted Moisturizer and the and Bobbi Brown's um, with a little sunscreen. So for all of us light people who like it light and pretty and you're going to go outside in humidity, knock on wood, hopefully soon. Um, this, this, is, this is gorgeous too. And it sets to a powder, so you don't need to set it with a powder. And that's usually pretty buildable, Sal, right? Like if you start yes. with the tinted moisturizer, mm -hmm. if, you, if you need a little bit more oomph, Correct. you start to get yep. on there, you can yep. highlight And you can bronze. expect that from, from tinted moisturizers pretty easy because they're, like you, like you said, they are meant to be layered. And instead of windshield wiping, if you want coverage, you just stipple. Okay, dibble. You stip all because the pigment then deposits and you're not just rubbing it on. Um, how many of us have heard of clay to post concealer? Yes. I've been with you. I mean, it's legendary, it's iconic. Every magazine, every beauty human around past and now is obsessed. Um, also, the nice thing is, when was the last time we heard that concealers had SPF in them? This is an SPF 25 and it's so creamy. Um, I'm obsessed with that. I can't get enough. I literally, if I'm walking my dog because I, I don't know, I feel good when I put on makeup, you guys. I feel, I don't know, I put, walk my dog in sweatpants and my clay to pot concealer and it'll bronzer and my head is held up high versus if I don't, my head is like down and with a hat on trying to hide from anyone that I potentially may know. So concealer, I love it under the eye, around the nose, any areas that you feel like your foundation or tinted moisturizer did not leave uh, cover enough. I also have encountered that a lot of women tend to do concealer and then foundation. For me, and in general, I would say, you don't really particularly know what you need concealing or hiding further than foundation if you do it first. Um, so do your foundation, and then that's where you were able to see where you need a little bit more coverage. And this is where your concealer, whatever one you may use, comes in handy. In an ideal world, under the eye, and right under the brow, you guys, is amazing, because it really frames out the brow before you put anything else on it. Or if you're someone that's afraid of brow, it makes the color of your brow stand out, stand out because you brought a little highlight under it. And then your handy powder. So this is where I was at, right before uh, me and Anne joined. So I was just like powdering, because I was like, oh my God, I gotta feel fabulous and great for us. And normally the Laura Mercier powder is what we all hear about. And it's great, it's fabulous, we can't get enough. And I gotta say, I totally agree. However, you have to use a sponge, like the little puff that it comes with because if we kind of do this, powder ends up on each side of you rather than um, you know, on your skin. So when you're stipple, you're stippling on your powder with your puff, you're able to see where it's deposited. Let it sit there for a few minutes, maybe touch up your eyebrow, do your lip, and then buff off all that excess so that your skin just looks like it's ready for a little color. And Sal, that's the, the Laura Mercier illuminating powder that you just put on, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. This is a normal setting powder, translucent. Um, I feel like you're reading my mind. And she does actually make a glow illuminating powder 
So for someone like our uh, gal pal Cindy that's on here, if you want just a little all over radiance all over the, your, your complexion, their glow powder would be something to touch up with instead of the matte translucent. And Sal, what kind of brush would you recommend for buffing powder? Do you have a um, I would say a dense, a densely packed uh, natural bristle brush is best because you do want it to slough off whatever your skin doesn't need. Uh, so by depositing color and product, right, you're stippling it on, you're pushing it onto the areas that you need it. Your skin is going to take what it needs and then you use your powder brush and you take off all that excess. So we don't look dry, we don't look powdery, we don't look chalky. You just look smooth. And I, I gotta say, even if you test this out and you and you put on a powder in this format, you'll be you'll notice the level of uh, longevity that you get from makeup versus not doing it. Love it. All right, what's next, Sal? So what we covered earlier, highlighter. Right? When if we're in a hurry, that emergency drawer, I like that, Anne. I like the put it in an emergency drawer. Doesn't doesn't necessarily have to be a drawer either. It could be a Ziploc bag that you keep in the upper high shelf next to the wine glasses. But um, but that. yes, yes, somewhere that it's easy and accessible to pull out. So I grab. so the nine one one drawer. Cindy says I love it. <laughs> She's reading my mind. Um, so tell us a little bit about highlighter because I feel like that term gets thrown around a lot and what what's the appropriate place to be highlighting again and then where like how do we avoid looking like we're um, a nymph or something yes yeah. please. listen I love highlighter so much that I totally have walked around looking like an alien but no one needs to um, however a highlighter is whether it's a cream or a powder format something that has a glisten you know, okay. almost like a candlelight uh, touch. These come in a variety of shades. This is the most neutral, and there's, there's a golden one if you're pretty olive. Um, and these are lovely because they bring in radiance back into your skin. And especially in our culture now with video, Zoom, virtual everything, it, it's able to catch light a lot easier. You don't look flat. You don't look dull. Um, and it really, in any capacity, reality or virtual, it really allows for your skin to look very fresh, really dewy. Um, I think anyone over the age of 20 no longer looks good bone dry, right? <laughs> like add a little bit of natural, natural radiance to your skin. And these are lovely because they also are not chalky and they're not glittery. And what's um, the name of that again, Sal? Sorry, one more. This is Laura Mercier's uh, face illuminator. Okay. Like I said, she makes a variety of them great price point. I've had this for probably over a year. And as I mentioned earlier, I enjoy looking like an alien sometimes. So I put it to very dense, heavy use, and we still are not seeing pan. Uh, now for lo location and placement, what you want to do is you want to go from right orbital bone to just think of like a C. Okay. And that's where you want to see the radiance. That's where you, for everyone, it doesn't matter face shape, it doesn't matter age. That's where you want to see it. Now, if you feel like your, your face is looking pretty sallow or dull in general, then you're, you, you can bring it a little bit lower towards the cheek to kind of enhance the cheek area. But really, this is where it belongs. I would keep it away from any other areas because it's unnecessary. You don't want a shiny center of your forehead. Um, you could bring it down the bridge of the nose if you're going to kind of chisel that with a little bit of bronzer. I always think um, we overcomplicate makeup in our culture, especially lately with like racing stripes and gashes and like, right. you know, brown spots here and a brown streak there. It's, it's too unnecessary. You know, I, loved, yeah. I loved your video that you did and um, we'll share Sal's contact information, but the one on contouring where it was like, nobody has time for the stripes and the dots and the tic-tac-toes. Well, like, I mean, to play tic-tac-toe on our face, it's just like, what if you lose a step and you get lost? Right. It's too much. And, you know, here's the interesting tidbit about that. I always laugh uh, at, at myself for even thinking of this, but I'm like, why are we listening to a preteen tell us how to wear makeup, right, that involves a hundred products, but also an hour of our time when the preteen doesn't have anywhere to be post-school. So, of course, they're, 
you know, digging into this, we have things to do. The preteens don't have 911 drawers, is I think what you're telling us, Sal. Correct. Right? Correct. Well, or they just sure. look a lot different than the rest of the people that might be on this particular <laughs> totally. professional webinar. Yes. <laughs> so we shouldn't be listening to that, guys, is what I'm saying. Put it on, take your highlight, bridge, orbital bone, right? And now you're probably thinking, well, I want to look somewhat human. What do we do? Also, do you notice I'm using the same brush for a lot of these things? Yeah, I do. That's and the other thing. I think if you find a really good brush, there's no need to have an entire sleeve of them. I think okay. you, you, everyone deserves a good powder brush and a good color brush. Uh, powder mm -hmm. being, being a little bit bigger because we're going to dust off excess. And then something a little bit more tapered. Um, a little bit more angled because for you could use the angle for highlight, you could use the round for blush, and you could use the sides for warming, contrasting bronzing, which Love is it. where we're headed now. Um, I bet you a lot of us out there still think that um, bronzer is just a, se a seasonal thing, right? We pull out our bronzers for uh, summer, perhaps. I think a bronzing powder is something that we deserve all year long, especially in the winter for us, because we lose our color. But in this case, so what you want to do is you want to go a little bit towards this top of, uh, part of the ear, to two fingers away from your mouth, and that is everyone's place where we, it'll chisel our faces, because you're not basing it on someone else's facial structure, you're basing it on your own. Uh, and this is where we're getting a little bit of that life back into the skin. It's adding the warmth, a little bit of contrast. Can you see a little bit of a difference from there here now? And this yes. is one of those key products that we talked about earlier, right? A lot of us look a little dull and somewhat flat on our calls, if, especially if we focus on ourselves or just your other friends. Yes, I feel oh. like that's been the huge, the, or that's been a huge thing that I've seen just in meetings, and and I think a, a really easy way to kind of create some dimension in an otherwise very flat, dull space. So being able to kind of use that bronzer to create a contour seems like it makes a lot of sense and is yes. is an easy thing to do. It doesn't take very long. It does not take very long. And uh, you know, Francois Nars once said to me, "If you, it's not about the product." Uh, color, it's about the placement. And bronzer couldn't be more appropriate for that. Whatever warm tone you have, it doesn't matter whether it's red or gold, uh, proper placement is important for it. So like I said, just, you know, below the cheek, two fingers away from your mouth is really all you need. And then this is another really good one that a lot of people tend to kind of miss, is what you want to do is you want to paint on your hairline, because that's normally where we get color first from sun, right? So instead of like covering your entire forehead, you want to only cover the hairline because we're trying to convince the kids that we were born like this, right? <laughs> so just on the hairline. Perfect. If, if you don't have much of a forehead like me, the reality is just do the temples, right? Because it kind of makes the face look a little bit more angular. It chisels it out for us a little easier. And then remember we said, we can easily do some good magic to the our nose by kind of bringing it in on each side. Don't be afraid to bring a little bit up almost towards the corner of our eye. I mean, you guys, I, look at this. I'm kind of loving this, right? <laughs> it looks amazing. Really easy. And there's that. Throw on a little lip, a little mascara, and you can face any zoom with your key key guys. What if you want, Sal, a, a little more punch? Um, I One of the things that I think is really hard for me especially is going beyond bronzer and into blush and really yes. trying to keep ourselves from looking like uh, Carol Baskin or, and more <laughs> human. So any suggestions that you'd have on what the right amount and color, I think just on, on choosing yeah. the right blush for you, because that yeah. does, I feel like it makes an impact and at least gives you a little bit of punch to um, when, you're, sure. when you're on your color. Totally. So right as we highlight under that bone, you chisel below, there is that space for your blush. For okay. anyone that, take, that has the time or needs the blush. I don't think colors, once again, colors is so important as much as placement is. 
Okay. I always say blush is something that is just like a foundation. The, it's not about the, yeah, like color, right? It's about placement. So instead of putting it on, and normally I see people just kind of do this guy, and you're kind of throwing it on there and hoping it lands in a good place and we're right. out the door. Um, smile in the mirror and do, and do strokes, but the strokes are upward, right? Okay. You want your, your face to, to seem, we're lifting, we're not dragging, right? So it's just upward. Are you a cream or a powder fan? I mean, either or work the same. I love, once again, going back to Gucci, these are for eyes, cheeks, lips, but for cheeks, they're equally as pretty as a powder. They blend really easy. Uh, if you're a little bit drier, I would say go the cream route because you, you'll feel like you, you don't, your skin doesn't have to take the time to warm it up. But what do we think? Love. What about, so what about if you're using a cream blush, it's okay to apply after? I feel like that was another like danger zone thing that I could get myself into where you're applying it after you yeah. set it. Like any tips for that, Sal? So I would say if you are someone that is only doing primer and then you're adding a little blush on your cheeks and your lips, it's beautiful to do it stick to cheek. Okay. Because then it's not going to grab anything. But if you're doing You've taken the time to do this. What I would do is what you just saw me do is finger and then blend in. Okay. Because you're dropping it off quickly rather than dragging it. And if you do drag it, it'll pick up whatever else you've left off before. Love it. So I would say finger, cheek, no makeup, quick, fresh look, maybe gym, maybe groceries, uh, stick to cheek. And once again, same brush, you guys, for my blush, right? The nice thing about a good quality bristle brush is that you don't have to worry about any product being left behind on it. It really does drop it onto the skin and you can move on to your next step. Love it. Which is brows. Brows. Did you know that I, um, I don't know if you saw this hand, but I posted a story about like, are you pencil or a gel? Yeah. And it was like, 50 and I was blown away. Wow. I, I feel like gels are a really, for me, they were always a really difficult product and pencil too. So I'm actually, I guess powder split the difference, but now I, after, <laughs> after watching, after watching that story, I think one of the key things that I've learned is, especially with a pencil for filling in the, the spaces in mm -hmm. between and then kind of it's not just, it doesn't have to just be one thing, I guess. So it's building the brow and kind of working yeah. with your brows that day. I always say brows are similar to when we first started wearing like a bold lip. Okay. You know, the first time you ever throw on a, a red or a dark lip, you're like, oh no, 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 <laughs> kidding, get it off. I look like a clown. Um, same with brows. So I always suggest most of my clients start something with something light. Nowadays, the brow gels have so much pigment. And they're right. so dense. And I mean, when you think about it, it, also, if you have a lot of eyebrow, you're a brow gel type of human anyway. But if you, even if you don't, if you have a small brow, but you don't require too much structure, going in with your gel, right? And if you want the gel and the pigment to stay put, wiggle back and forth. And the pigment deposits both on flesh and hair. So you almost get that pencil finish hmm. right yeah i love it drag it down to the tail and look at that i mean how fast and easy is a brow right beautiful sal have you seen the soap brow products or the, i have, I have. What do you think, I think of that uh, i think it's crab pardon my french no uh, but tell I us mean, do we want, so here's what the, have, have, have you tried it? I have, I have never tried it. I've, I've used the wax products or yeah. uh, that just to help kind of shape a little bit or when I'm brushing I, my brows out, but, um, but no, that was a new one that I came across and thought, I, how does that finish? Like, I just imagine very it like, so it's yeah. a very uncomfortable finish. Okay. So you, you think of walking around with frozen eyebrows that feel frozen, right? <laughs> 
And if you touch, they're sticky. Right. So it isn't very comfortable. I think it's one of those things where uh, boredom drives people to a lot of discoveries and, and some take off and others don't. But I mean, I don't want to be rubbing soap on my eyebrow ever. <laughs> right. Understood. Subject sub gels can feel very tight, right? Because yes. they set to, and they dry down tight. This, this doesn't, which is incredible. And how many times can you see a brow gel be layered? Right. You can add a few more without it having to flake off, look chunky, um, or uneven. My other uh, favorite right now, this is the Chantecaille Brow Pencil. It does have a spoolie at the bottom. And the most amazing part about this is the tip. So it's more of a triangle. It is not a round or it's not a point. Why is it a triangle? Well, because it makes the brow uh, drawing on easier, etching your brows a lot easier. So you start uh, with the point towards you first because it does hug the shape. And this is uh, a little bit more of a waxy pencil, but not so powdery either. But the waxy, uh, like Anne, you said you've used a wax before, right? Yeah. The waxy part allows for your brow to stay together. Mm -hmm. It kind of bonds the brow together, right? And then yeah. if you're gonna get the tail, then you just angle the triangle so that it hugs the curve of your tail of your brow a little bit easier. Does that make sense? Yes. Right? So you start aiming the tip towards you and then, hey, how you doing? I gotta say, I love this so much. The first time I tried it, I went so brow happy, I looked like Groucho Marx. I was so brow happy, but let's say you get brow happy, take off the excess with the spoolie. That's the reason why it's there. That's the and reason. It, and it picks up all the excess, combs your brow so that it gets a little bit more of a natural look to it. Look at this, I love it, right? It's brow high. Are you a gel or a pencil? What do you think, Anne, what would you like? Oh man, I'm gonna go. I'm I'm sticking with pencil. I'm gonna try that one out. I think that's gonna be. It's so good. I yeah, that. I like the works. angled. I like the angled top. I feel like that will help a little bit instead of just like having the like pointer pencil going. Yeah, right or right. like when you resharpen it and then you end up with a sharper eyebrow than the other because it's gotten a little dull by yes. then. Yeah, yes, that it, that too. <laughs> that it always will pump out in that shape. Love it. Right. Yeah. Always. It'll always come out in that triangle uh, shape. I love it. I'm obsessed. It's one of my favorite new discoveries. So we covered eyebrows. Do we have any question on eyebrows? I think we're good right now. I will jump in with questions. If any other come up, feel free to put them in the chat box. <laughs> um, what, uh, lips. You love yes. Kylie. I love I'm obsessed with the Tom Ford lips. They, they're they they're pretty awesome. They smell great, they wear well, but it's a gloss. It's not going to stay put on or put as long as long as you'd like it to. These are the uh, the Clay de Poe Lip Glorifier. This is your lip balm, your lip plump, and your uh, color all in one. There's three shades. There's a red that's gorgeous. Um, it doesn't look as red on they're very self-adjusting. So one quick question on brows from Cindy. How do you stop at the end of your natural tail or extend it out? Um, I think a good rule of thumb to always follow Cindy is you want your tail to end at the corner of your eye and you want it and you want it to begin at the corner of your eye. The rest is, you know, do as you wish but that's where the tail should end. Um, so I have a really good friend of mine in New York that works with a lot of seasoned celebrities. And he always say, says, you know, you gotta lift, you gotta lift, tail up, tail up. Um, I think follow your normal brow. Etching, etching, etching a different brow that doesn't belong to you is challenging enough and follow your own, follow what you have. Seek professionals is what you're saying. <laughs> you're gonna... <laughs> 
If you're going to start doing, yes, I love it. I love it. All right. Sorry, Sal. Back to lips. And then I think we have mascara to cover too in the last few minutes. Yes. So lips, I love this. You know, if you want to one, one thing does all, put it on before you go to bed, put it on before you go on a meeting, put it on while you're walking around your house if your lips feel dry. Uh, it's a great formula. It smells of roses and it's so pretty. Uh, it's similar to uh, the very iconic Dior Lip Glow. Uh, um, it, you know, it adjusts to your lips. It gives you uh, the right color that belongs to you. They're so pretty. I've had mine on since I walked my dog this morning. I just put a little more on, but you know, and I love a powder donut lip. I mean, when have you seen me wear anything other than, you know, powder donut? Sal, but, I have a question for choosing a color um, for, so one thing that uh, when I sent you some, some freeze frames of some of the people in the industry, including myself, who are looking a little flat, one thing you said is you just need some color. You need a pop. So mm -hmm. what would your recommendation be, especially for those of us who maybe don't wear makeup or lipstick, especially, um, we're just doing a gloss. What would your recommendations be for like how far you go in choosing something that's maybe a little brighter or poppier? Um, I think sticking to the undertones that you already wear. Let's say that, you know, when you do wear color, you wear uh, a light pink. Sure. Amplify pink by going a little bit further into its family, right? Uh, stick to those, the undertones that you like because they'll, they won't be as shocking to you when you see them on. Let's say that you normally are a cool girl. You wear your pinks and your berries and you flip that and you go to, you know, a, a orange or something peachy. That's where you see the ah and you shriek because now it's a whole new color territory that you haven't tried on before. So I would say stick to what you know. So if you're a berry, if you're a peach, uh, it's just extend in that same family circle. Go Love a little it. bit older than that. And it's um, pretty... It's, it's easier. Things like this too are also incredible because it does push the limit of your lip color. Like I said, they adjust. So they, they get, they grow color based on your own skin type and tone. Uh, so these are nice because they'll go as bold as they can. And then you're like, oh, actually I don't look so bad in something a little bit brighter. And then you're able to commit to something that's meant to be that color. Right. And you're not going the opposite direction, which is also too dark, which I can have bad Correct. i've seen a couple of those and it's yeah we're like oh my god keep it light it's the summer yeah. yes <laughs> yes i love it mascaras uh what's your take on mascara Anne? um you know i am kind of a loyalist i feel like i've been with the same mascara i i try to go out and explore some others but i keep coming back to a uh, and a L'Oreal, the voluminous mascara, it's one of my favorites, but- I love, um, I love voluminous too, actually. I think it's a great mascara. Yeah, and, and it's especially good, now- Really good price point. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but what do you have today? What are you using that you'd recommend? So 96% natural kits. I mean, I think us as consumers in the last decade have, have gotten and grown a lot savvier uh, we, we are a lot more ingredient conscious. We're a lot more worried about parabens and things of that nature. Uh, back to Gucci, West Ben. She has created this great mascara. The brush alone is divine. The color is dark. The wear is incredible. No flakes, no smudging. However, when you do uh, go to remove it it comes off so simple with the most gentle removal whether it's soap and water or an eye makeup remover uh and that's incredible yes and you look like you have something for me uh the tom ford lip what was that product i'm i'm grabbing the link right now um but remind me what the product was just the the the, the Lux gloss they are incredible it's called okay. Lux gloss they come in a variety of shades uh, shades that are stunning, I think, for everyone. I think it's called Possession. It's, it's so pretty. There's another one called uh, Aura that's just simple. It's neutral, but it's, it's a sexy nude, if you would. It's not so powder, powder donut like I normally like it. But the texture is beautiful, you guys. And the applicator's a good size applicator, so you don't have to, you know, jam your tube back in there longing for more. It comes off super uh, full and great loaded, a great loaded wand. 
But I love this mascara, you guys. I can't, I, I wear, me and Lisa, I've been wearing this a lot. I know we're not seeing Lisa today, but that's okay. It's good we're, to have you we, doing We're that. going to see Lisa when if, when, if you guys invite us back. Oh, and, yes, okay. And then we can do an eye demo, and then we can like dive, you know, dig into um, more glam, if you would. I love right? it, I love Stuff it. Stuff that only she can do and I can't. <laughs> Uh, what about, Cindy wants to know, mascara, the lower lashes, yes or no? I say yes. I okay. always say yes. I think if you look at a photo of yourself and you are someone that only does top, and some you're like, wow, my mascara is running or my dark circles look heavy. It isn't so much that you have dark circles. It is the contrast from, right, the shadow of a dense lash bed on top and then not having anything on the bottom that makes that area look a little darker. Brighten it up by putting a little definition there. Love it. Great. I always do bottom. And I don't have as good of bottom lashes as I do my top. And then there are some people that have stunning, super long bottom lashes. And the rule of thumb with that is, you know, coat just the base instead of the whole entire, if you have re really long under eye lashes, because otherwise you also run into the same problem where if it does run, you'll look tired, et cetera. Um, Sal, speaking of looking tired, uh, I, this new trend that uh, all the beauty and I would say, uh, we'll say fashion and uh, retail people are writing about is the move from the lipstick effect, which typically happens during a recession to the eyeliner effect because we'll all be wearing masks. So um, in addition to, to that, one thing that uh, we've seen a lot, an increase in volume of is eye creams too. And I know you sent me a couple of eye creams, which I'll post in here, but um, just, I guess if you would tell us about the importance of using some of those as a way to just make sure that we're, we're looking fresh and alert and alive. Totally. So I, um, in general, I think all of us, the second we put anything on our under eye that's makeup wise or makeup related, your biggest fear is, it's, is it going to crease? Is it going to enhance my lines? Is it going to make me look older? Sorry, there's some bites going on. Let me see who it is. Um, <laughs> um, and now most of the eye creams come with these amazing tools. Uh, this is my favorite. This is the Sicilia Eye and Lip. Um, great size. It's the average size, I would say, for most eye creams, actually. But gorgeous texture, not too heavy, not too waxy. And it comes with this guy, where you literally roll your wrinkles and crinkles away. It's a great metal. Um, you can also deep puff by just pressing and then kind of, you know, following along. I would always lubricate that area first and then go in with your wand. I find myself that when I'm binge watching, watching trash TV, I'm sitting there doing this for a lot longer than I should, but it isn't harmful. If anything, it's great, but these are addicting. Oh, those I, rollers I, are amazing. I can't tell you how many clients are like, what was that? I need it. And the second they have it at home, they're like, I'm thrilled. I can't yes. get enough. A lot of people put it in the fridge. I don't know. This is super cold as it is. It's a, it's a, yeah. I'm sure fancy metal of sorts, but I, I mean, to go from my bathroom to there, to, to the fridge to get it is too much for me, too cumbersome. Yes. I guess. Um, and then if, if you don't want to blow that kind of scratch on an eye cream, this is also great. This is the Bobbi Brown uh, Extra uh, Repair Cream. A little bit richer immediately, so you'll feel it um, a little harder to spread until you get it a little warm, but it does have similar properties uh, she does, she does uh, do lots of botanicals in her products, similar to Sicily, probably not as intense, but I think it's also a great product so long as, you know, you're putting something on and you want something good, do this if, if budget is an issue. This is also in the $60 range and um, it's beautiful. It lasts a long time also. Sadly, it does not come with a little companion, but I don't know, maybe a spoon will do you. 
Yeah. Or if those rollers are, I think most, you know, you can order those rollers from most places that have the smaller, probably not the, the Sisley version, obviously, but, um, <laughs> but, they're, but they are, uh, they are such a great, I, for me, especially I, I keep mine in my 911 drawer because it during and in between meetings, just to like roll out the forehead and under eyes that helps relieve a lot of pressure. Those are, those rollers totally. are an amazing totally. thing. So. I was on the phone with a client earlier today and we were chatting about this specifically. And she said, I don't know that it does anything, but when I go on camera, I feel so much better. And I was like, well, it's probably a combination of both, but right. just the psychology alone of it. And also when you think about it, well, yeah, it's pressing the, the, the potion that you just put on a little deeper further and allowing it to spread probably a lot more evenly. I, I love it. I use it every single night and I can't get enough. Sal, thank you so much for uh, taking the time with us today. Um, we do have a little bit of time if we have some more questions. Um, a reminder that the top three things again for all of you that if you have that Zoom call in 10 minutes to make sure you have in your 911 drawer are bronzer, highlighter, and brows. Um, and Let's see. One question we have. Oh, how do you how do you choose the right shade for under eye cover? If it's too dark, it makes the circles worse. If it's too light, we look like an owl. Um, I think the uh, the general rule of thumb for that is you go a shade or two lighter than your skin. I would hope that most makeup professionals nowadays are able to kind of pick that out for you. But even if you're doing it yourself. If you don't want to look like an owl, then go one shade lighter than your foundation because it also doesn't require too much blending. The lighter you go, the harder you have to blend. And yes, the payoff is great because it makes you look bright, but it could also make you look like you've been wearing goggles at a Caribbean vaca vacation the whole time. You know, you've got two white dots. But one shade lighter would be ideal. It doesn't require as much homework or blending. I love it. Sal, thank you so much. Uh, if people want to reach out to you after this and get more help uh, with all of their beauty needs, how can they get in touch with you? What's the best place for them to look? I am most active as most people nowadays, I think, on Instagram. So if you can DM me on there, I, I go through every single one of them. Uh, it's Winnie Houston, at Winnie Houston, or Sal at beautyxl.com it's you know my pleasure i'm an extrovert you guys so in this in these times i am looking at even like the ra most random of messages for the sake of human interaction so no question is too uh you know irrelevant throw anything it. you have at me i love it we will and just a reminder again for everybody that is on this event Cosbar, as part of their participation, is giving away some special gifts to all the people that participated in the event tonight. Um, if you email your order, so any of the products that are in that chat, if you email those um, to Edina, that's E-D-I-N-A at Cosbar, C-O-S-B-A-R dot com, and you uh, put SAL, S-A-L, 2020 in the subject line, in the email, anywhere. SAL 2020, I wish it was SAL 2020. Can you imagine, SAL? Can you consider, would you put your name in the ring for 2020? Think of how beautiful we would all be. <laughs> that I just occurred that. to me. SAL 2020 <laughs> in, in the subject line, and we will make sure that you get the additional gifts from Cosbar. And can we um, talk and about how fabulous the gifts actually are? Yes, So they're yes, deluxe let's do it. samples. So these are like not just travel friendly when we do travel, but they're a ginormous size. This is an ounce of a moisturizer. Yes. So although it. the deluxe samples may vary, uh, just know that they are deluxe and they're a lot bigger than, for, let's say, I don't know, like a normal sample. Although even this is generous. Yes, I love it. Yeah. So Thank lots of that and support local like how yes. sweet is or local it's a local store it's a small company yes uh, and so they're supporting you and we want to support you and all of your and that efforts. is so sweet and you're the best 
Well, thank you so much, Sal. We look forward to having many more discussions with you about yes. um, Zoom prep and so much more as we head into the summer. Thank you so much. That. Again, we'll be emailing the list of all the products to you. So if you don't didn't get a chance to uh, catch them all tonight, we'll be sending you a follow-up. So look for that in your email. If you do have any questions too, please feel free to reach out to us uh, at redarcherretail at gmail.com uh, where you got this invite from, reply to any of the webinar invites. And we're happy to get you in touch with Sal or to answer any other questions that you have. And second, um, we ha will have another uh, looking great from head to waist coming up next week where we will cover uh, fashion, what quick pieces you can throw on for the neck down uh, so that you're looking fresh and fun and even some stuff that you can do with your backgrounds to make sure that you're looking ready for that Zoom call. So thanks again to everyone for participating and we'll see you again soon.